This guide will show you how to start a new settlement and go on to win in that scenario even if your original plan fails and you have to adapt to new buildings and services, production, perks and map conditions. I will talk about recipes, farming, complex foods, specialized homes and keeping settlers resolve high even when low on food, as well as how to quickly clear dangerous blades. To even have a chance to make a good start in Against the Storm, this is the screen where it all starts. You have to plan strategically what do you want to have in your new settlement and how to supply it to start with. For example, these are the royal woodlands and this is a place where I can cut a lot of stuff out of the trees because this place is rich with them. I can get the plant fiber, resin, wood of course and eggs and this is why it is a much better choice to start here with the beavers instead of this other convoy that has lizards and humans as the beavers are much better at woodcutting and therefore they will be of much use when I start this new settlement. Now the beavers have different food requirements than the lizards and the humans and when it comes to lizards and humans I would have chosen meat to be able to produce jerky out of it but when I'm going with the beavers I'm gonna go with the stone to have the ability to have stone pads around my heart and I'm going to go with the food that can be converted to flour and then make the stuff that beavers like to eat and this is biscuits. As for the last two embark points which I have more of because my smoldering city is leveled up I'm gonna go with some eggs and also with some extra vegetables. This is going to allow me to keep beavers from eating mushrooms which can also be turned into flour and then later on into pie and biscuits. As for the map itself I have a large modifier here meaning I will get 12 artifacts and 12 machinery to upgrade my smoldering city with if I win the scenario. As for the modifier that is granting me those buffs there is a huge debuff. I can choose one fewer cornerstone. Luckily I have an upgrade in the citadel the unlocked which allows me to choose from 3 cornerstones meaning that my choices will go down from 3 to 2 and this isn't such a dangerous debuff. Now we are going to begin. If I check this out, I see the gift from the wood. This means that I will gain ember every time a drizzle season starts and for every additional hostile level reached, which isn't really what I want to aim for. And this is amazing. During drizzle, my rain collectors can collect wine and wine is exactly what beavers like to get their resolve up. So this is perfect in this map with this many beavers. As for the negative effects, so I'm going to make sure that my hostility isn't high, that everybody has a home, and what would this be? It means that I need to give them complex food and housing or else they will have negative effects. And this one I'm not really going to worry about as I don't plan to reach hostility level 5. Now because the beaver caravan I had also carried with it two populations which I couldn't know the race of until the game started, I got one harpy and one human, meaning for this map I will not have access to lizards which isn't too bad. Now here I am going to keep the harpy in the ancient heart, this is because she will increase the global capacity by 5, the carry capacity for items for all my settlers, and I do not really have to use the beaver who would actually reduce the consumption of fuel because I will have plenty of fuel on this map because these trees give a lot of wood and the beavers are great at doubling up this production whenever they are working in woodcutter camps. What I need to also do is to remove coal, the sea marrow and oil from being burned here because I want to keep my coal in the event one of these glades requires something to be sold, a camp or an event using coal. Now that I have this out of the way, I'm gonna go over here to consumption control. This is one of the first unlocks you get in the smoldering city and I advise always going for it. Why? Because here now I can disable roots and mushrooms from being eaten and just leave the berries, the vegetables and the eggs which is going to allow me to quickly turn these into flour and then be able to make biscuits which are the food of choice for all of my settlers, all the races and also pie which is a choice that the humans are going to make to eat. The next thing that I need to do is to set up the woodcutter camps where I have a lot of wood to cut and also lots of space to free up for future buildings. That will be on this map pretty much over here to the left. So I'm going to place one woodcutter camp here, turning it for that forest so they have an easy access and then doing another one over here. These are going to go up in priority to three because I'm also going to set up the paved roads which are going to increase the speed for the villagers to 15% around the ancient heart and also around the warehouse 
because this is where they will be spending most of their movement about and I want them to be able to quickly get in and out of the warehouse and bring in or take out items. Once I'm done with this, I can take a look at what else is here. I have some clay deposits, which means I will easily make bricks and I also have eggs and meat, which means that with a scavenger camp I have a new food source. Now because I have plenty of food already, as we can see here, 24 pie, berries, eggs and vegetables that they are going to be eating, I don't have to hurry up with this, but I do need this for bricks, so I'm going to click here and get the stone cutters camp now this is going to have the priority of minus one meaning that first these are going to be constructed then the roads and then this one more thing that i have to do at the woodcutters camp is down here and choose only cut down marked trees this means that only the trees that i mark personally with the mark tool will be cut and therefore i have exclusive control over what they cut and then choose where i'm going to be building or which of these i'm going to open up these glades now of course i could say avoid opening up glades and check that box as well and then go down here and even if i mark all of this they will not cut the trees nearest to the glade but i cannot prefer the more finer control with just using only cut mark trees so i'm gonna go with that now this is all the preparations done and I can let the game run. I'm even going to run it at speed 3 just for the sake of not wasting your time while I'm explaining things. So this is the first one done and I put in 3 beavers to work here because they love working here because of their specialization bonus as we can see here. The 3 marked is here and also here. We know that they're going to have a 10% chance to double the yield and over here once this is finished this also goes with three beavers now i'm just going to see what am i going to get of the cornerstones so spices herbs and root production is increased plus one for every 75 biscuit produced and this is perfect for me although flame amulet is an artifact that will reduce hostility from the woodcutters by six and this is also excellent as i will be using the woodcutters a lot and they do pile up a really high hostility bonus as you can see here with six woodcutters that is 72 but if I choose this, the hostility from woodcutters is decreased by 6. So if I pick this, we can take a look here, that it's now down to only 36. And this effectively reduced the hostility by half just with that one cornerstone. So that was a great choice. Now of course, these folks need somewhere to sleep and live. And this is before the storm starts, so I'm going to use my wood for the shelters. And now that I have more wood, I can make a lot of shelters. So this is 4 times 3, that's 12 and that is going to be enough for my 10 population. Now let's see the orders. We have have six beavers, which is a no brainer, or have six humans and gain the small farm with the increase in fungal production and packs of mushrooms. This is also cool, but the reward for roots and the grove is also excellent as I'll be able to directly produce crystallized dew, which is really useful if you want to quickly produce tools. So I'm really torn, but it's much easier to do this because I already have eight beavers, so I'm gonna go with this. As for this one, have 35 wood and gain more population, or even better, have two human homes, two beaver homes, and then get three arrivals, 10 bricks, and most importantly, have a millstone plus two to flower production. So this is brilliant, especially considering that I was planning on doing a lot of flower production. So I'm gonna pick this, although it's going to be difficult to build these homes at first, but later it's going to be easier because I will have more production. As for over here, more grain. This is also perfect because grain can be turned into flour and can be grown in farms on fertile soil. So this is also a no brainer and these packs are not that difficult to produce and plus we'll get the plus one to fabric production which we'll need for the coats as both the beavers and humans want to wear coats. This increases their resolve while the harpies are great at production of that. So let's let the time roll. Watch the beavers cut down this, make some more room for new homes here and move the woodcutters a bit down here so they can actually go there and cut those trees as well make more room for future homes here because i'm soon going to get more population now i can already do this get the grove and packs of goods which is with roots finish that now to concentrate on the human homes and the beaver homes now because i'm further ahead with the upgrade of my smoldering city i can build beaver homes and human houses and this means that i need a lot of lumber in order to produce that i need to find a production excellent lumber mill this is exactly what i need it can produce lots of planks so i'm going to pick that and oh here we go so the plantation or the brickyard, even better, to be able to produce lots of 
bricks and pottery crystallized you not so much while the plantation is maybe the optimal choice here as i might not get this again and having berries and plant fiber is excellent for feeding these folk so i should definitely go with the plantation for this choice and here we have the smithy so simple tools awesome coats also and trade goods all perfect but the provisioner would get me packs of provisions flour and then the bakery with the biscuits and pie this is so sweet but i am gonna go with the provisioner because getting the flour the barrels and the packs of provisions is an awesome choice because i will be able to use all of these so i'm gonna go with the provisioner and here small farm perfect so this is exactly what i'm going to need to be able to produce lots of grain and then flour from that so small farm so we got both the small farm the plantation the grove and over here the lumber mill and the provisioner now to build the lumber mill i need the planks and to be able to make planks i'm going to need first the crude workstation that one i'm putting right next here to my warehouse because it needs to have quick access to get the wood and then return the planks once they're finished now i am not really going to need planks right now because i need the lumber mill built which is going to produce planks much better much more efficiently because of the three stars next to the planks and that requires some bricks and some fiber so i'm going to just check here so i need plant fiber that is something i will get from these trees while here i have the clay that i will need to get from here and this is why the stone cutter camp is the next one to be built now the planks i am going to be producing exclusively at the lumber mill and then i can already start building the beaver homes and the human homes are going to require some bricks which means this is probably going to have to go up to like a limit of eight well this is going to be fine at the limit of four i can now let the time roll and have the beavers continue cutting here and i can get them closer to the wood by moving as it is free to move these camps now as soon as i am able to trade i'm going to need to create a trade post which i already have enough wood for but i need some space for it to actually even be built so i'm going to cut some additional trees over here to make more space for it and build it about here as you can see for now i have just enough for everything that i need to be producing but very soon i will need more population as i want to supply them with their needs and their desires which are represented here and i have explained all about resolve and how to increase it in my other video which is going to be linked up here and down in the description up here now i have enough room to place a lumber mill that's going to be right across the warehouse and have a quick access to the resources as i explained before as we can see here in the recipe it would take eight wood for two planks in the crude workstation while in the lumber mill it just takes three wood to get two planks which means you can produce a lot of planks and which you can trade for a lot so i'm going to put the limit at about 25 to begin with this is a year two and this is the point where i get new population but before i do that i'm gonna go for the cornerstones as sometimes cornerstones can influence what you get from the population that is why it is better to go first with the cornerstones as for these let's see so i would get two more harpies or one more human because i'm going to have plenty of farms i'm going to increase my population of humans as they work best in farms as i said i do need a trader so the trader trading post will go over here there we go the lumber mill is finished this is the place where the beavers again are the best at working so you can see they'll get 10 percent chance to double the yield meaning that at some point i will get out of three wood four planks and this is an incredible increase in the amount of goods you can sell later on because out of three wood that's practically worth just 0.18 amber you get four planks which are worth above 0.60 amber which is a great trade-off so these planks if i sell them they're going to be worth two amber and since the trader is about to leave i'm going to have to use up some resin to make up the difference to get three amber so let's do this trade now and now i can buy the extra perk to barrel production why am i buying this perk because i already have the building that's going to be producing barrels and that is why it's important to boost that production even more now i will not be trading for anything else with the trader so i'm going to let him leave while i'm going to be making a lot more planks to finally build those beaver homes so i'm going to have one here and one here and then if i have enough bricks and i have four now i'll be able to build those human homes which take two bricks so i'm going to put these 
over here and actually the other one two over here and then just use the regular pads to here while the woodcutter needs to be moved over to here and start cutting off the trees here as for the other one he has pretty much cleaned out everything so we can move him up here to thin out the forest in this part if we take a look at the food situation we still have 19 eggs 52 vegetables and 20 berries so no need to go ahead and take these so with these two homes done the beavers have moved in and they'll also get an additional bonus here to the resolve because of their specialized homes and so the same thing will happen with the humans now i don't really need two human houses at this point i only have two humans so that's one home enough but i do need the second one to do this order which i am waiting for to be finished and filled because I am going to get a really good bonus out of it. So let's just wait for this home to be finished. And now when I finish this, I'm going to increase the flower production once I start with it, get lots of bricks, get new villagers. Now, as you can see, I'm in the second year and half of it is already passed and I haven't cut into any of these glades because we really do not need to. I don't need any new food sources, nor do I need any sources of resources for item production. But as soon as I start needing that, that is the point when I start cutting into these, which are not dangerous because I don't wish to enter dangerous glades until I have tool production. Now, because I can choose another building as I have just finished one of those tasks, Let's see, the scribe would give me scrolls and ale and simple tools, which is brilliant. The kiln would get me coal, bricks and jerky, not really what I need on this map. The smithy would get simple tools and coats and packs of trade goods, while the brick oven would get me pie, coal and incense. At this point, what I need are simple tools that could be from the scribe, but I have much better production at the smithy and it also can produce coats and trade goods and these are all necessary, so I'm gonna go with the smithy. These guys are at the limit because this building had a limit of 25, so I will increase here at 100 as well. And I can sell to the next trader, which is going to arrive in 4 minutes, a lot of those if they are going to buy. He's willing to buy packs of goods, raw food, building materials. Excellent. So I can sell to Zhorg lots of those planks and get other stuff. Because the food situation is probably getting dire. Yeah, we're down to 15 eggs, 15 berries and 14 vegetables. And considering I have more population, they will be eating more. And with more population that I'm just about to get, let's see, two humans, one harpy and one beaver. And they're going to bring some tools and fabric, which is excellent. So we'll take them and then we'll make the building required here, the scavenger to get these eggs. And we'll increase the road here a little bit more. So that's okay. I will actually disallow meat so that I can make jerky for my harpies if I end up getting that building because both humans and harpies need jerky so there we go we can unlock the next building so we get to choose from the scribe the weaver the clother or the herb garden definitely don't need the herb garden and i need the weaver to be more productive at my fabric production and then later make clothes but i already have the smithy so i don't need the clother i can just get the weaver and then use the smithy to produce clothes so i'm gonna go with this one so this building is gonna go here Considering it's drizzle and the clearance is next, now I might as well start opening up new glades as I have more population to actually employ and I need to get a source of clay. So, I mean, I can trade for it if this trader is going to bring. So pottery tools, raw food, no, he might not bring that at all. So yeah, it is better for me to start opening up these glades. So that is why I'm going to have these guys work on these trees cutting them down, opening up glades and see what resources I can locate. What did we find here? Excellent clay deposits. So here's my building over here and start getting that resource. And at this point, since I have enough population and I can make some wine, I should get me some rain collectors. Let's put it here close to the warehouse. So one here. So the second one will go here. So the rain collectors during the next drizzle will create wine and then I can spend that wine for the beavers to have luxury. But this is a service that gets handled in the guild house, the holy market and the market. And that's something that I have to unlock with these. So let's see, <laughs> there we go, the market. But the tavern is also something that's useful because of the leisure fulfilled order that I have. And this is for both the humans and the beavers. So I should probably go first with the tavern, especially since I can brew some ale 
and the harpies are going to be happy in the tavern as well if i can make them some brawling gear which is the training gear that's made here at the weavers so this is actually the building that's going to help the most at this point so i'm gonna go with the tavern and that requires eight fiber which i still don't have so i should probably increase this to 12 let her work on that the trader has arrived so i might as well finally use up these planks i'm gonna spend all 60 as i can quickly make more and i can use up some resin as well which i am getting by cutting trees and that's about everything that i have to sell so that's worth 15 ember what can i get in return harvesting crops is faster farmers carry items and woodcutters move faster so let's get this to the maximum 15 okay and then reduce this a little bit to get the most out of it so i will have 17 ember this is going to cost me 10 and that's pretty much everything that i am going to be doing with this trader i have found some fertile ground here excellent so let's move these woodcutters here closer let's get the reinforced road made out of the copper ore and then we'll move that over here to get close to the farm and then just clear out these trees to free up more of these patches this is something i have explained in my tips video about removing the extra trees and then getting more fertile soil because some of these trees are on that soil and there are a lot more tips in the video linked up here now because it's still clearance i might as well open up another glade so i'll put these woodcutters to work over here so the woodcutters will clean this up and the building that i'm going to be building here is going to be the small farm to get more grain the placement of that one depends on where exactly do i free up more of this farmable land i think it's actually just here so that means that the small farm is going to end up being here but that's not still 100 percent sure so i should probably not build it unless i'm 100 percent sure where i'm going to locate it so the range of it can capture all of these fertile fields now I am at hostility 1 because I have opened up those new glades so in the future this is going to increase how much negative resolve I get during storms and let's see what did we find here oh excellent so some sea marrow and some dewberry bushes but I do not have a herbalist camp so I can't do anything about that now as for the farm as I said it is going to be here and that way all of these will be covered so farm fields here and can i get one more road here all the way yes i can so this is a really fast road you can see them going much faster through here than through here or on the ground and that is why it's excellent to keep your resources for the places that are really far from the main warehouse of course i could build a warehouse of my own here i do have the resources for it and then shorten their path which isn't a bad idea at all especially considering the fact that over here i will finally have access to some plant fiber if i make a harvester camp so i'm going to have that one built over here i have somebody working there and now once we get to drizzle we'll get wine from this building we can see here now that the drizzle has started we can choose spark dew or wine i'm going to uncheck spark dew stop them from working and then bring them back and they are going to start producing wine now i could switch them over the beavers for harpies as they have a higher chance to produce but i'm going to lose the boost to their resolve but it isn't too bad because during drizzle and clearance it's not really necessary to boost the resolve so i am actually going to go with the harpies instead of these guys that means freeing up a harpy from somewhere i suppose from here now I, at this point i might as well get a smithy we can put that one over here and we'll need to be producing simple tools for which we would need crystallized dew or copper bars and also coats for which we just need fiber which we are going to be producing at a nice rate now that we have a source of fiber and we'll put two of these to work here and get this limit up to like maybe 30 just to make sure to have plenty of fiber for coat production as for the tools themselves to get the crystallized dew i will need to find more sources of fertile ground in order to make a grove and in order to do that i need to open up the more glades to try and find them now do i have enough tools to go for a dangerous glade no i do not so i should not open up any of those just in case and then i might as well go for the smaller glades i have two three over here and 
these are just dangerous 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 and i have one over here which is really far so let's go with the two that are closer by now i was lucky enough to find another spot with some fertile soil in the small glade the grove can go over here it will get all of these and then i should get a road to it i have 20 stones so i can definitely get a road getting to it as soon as i actually clear out the trees that are blocking me but i can get the road from the other side built as well and then over here get all of these farm fields made on this this will get me that crystallized dew i will not be producing any resin here only crystallized dew now that over here they are unable to produce more vine because it is now clearance and this forest mystery only works during drizzle i'm going to stop the harpies from producing any more here once they deliver this wine so what did we find here a camp which would need just six food let's send some well i don't really want to send meat so i will wait for vegetables to be harvested and i could get more beavers or more amber i am actually going to have enough space here as soon as i finish clearing out this camp which i can do right now as i have enough food for that so let's just choose to get more people and once i clear that up i can make a new heart there and then finish up with this order as for trade i can collect both of these and that means just one more trade route let's see what's easy to do well i can do this packs of crops for and with two provisions so we can but i only have one set of provisions do i have anything that i can do with that no oh i can coal excellent so i can sell coal with one provisions and then finish up this order as well so that's two orders i can easily finish i just need lots of packs of crops oh i need two more farm fields oh that's so unfortunate so i'll need to find one more of those okay let's see what the merchant will take i can sell one of these essences as i don't really need that and sea meadow i don't really want to sell i can use it so that's just it and then we'll take four amber for this what can we buy we can buy to burn fuel longer in hearts we don't need that the herbalist camp actually that's excellent scouts can open chests faster not really necessary and a fungal guide not really necessary so we'll go with the herbalist camp and now that we have that we can finally use it on all of these bushes and also some mushrooms that i have over here so we'll go with here putting that there and that's excellent now why am i keeping the meadow well because when i open up one of these more dangerous glades i'll be able to finish up the camps and events faster if i sacrifice it and you can see i will get 25 percent boost which can stack up to 75 percent if i spend a lot of sea meadow so the trade route has been completed that was the fort so we just finished this order we'll get increased production to fabrics we'll get some bricks and some amber so that's brilliant and now we can go on to finishing up this one because we have cleared up this spot here and we can have another small heart here and now we can choose a new building finally we can make some either ale and pickle goods or well none of these other ones are really good so we'll go with the brewery the brewery i can put here next to this warehouse and this needs to go up to eight population that means we need to move some homes into this area for a human to actually have somebody to produce the resolve for and in order to be able to upgrade this hub let's get some of these fences here and get let's say some battles so that's four decorations and we need eight people living here so let's move some of these shelters that's one that's two and we need one more that's three so we have nine people we are going to have four decorations and this will level up over here we are finally harvesting crystallized dew so the smithy can also start producing simple tools out of this we'll limit that to about 25. now as i have two hubs my production of planks will be even further increased with this new perk and i also get 12 tools with that i'm up to 14 tools and at this point i might as well open up one more glade let's see what did i find in the one that i did up lock stock cutters camp is required in order to get more clay out of this so that's excellent and here i would need a trapper's camp which i don't have so let's open up something that's really close 
So let's open up this one and then they will open this up. I should have enough tools if anything comes up that requires tools to fix. And looking over here, I have plenty of fabric so I can finally do some training gear, which also requires some crystallized dew and some planks. Let's put that to 25 and limit that because that is something that I'll be using up at the tavern, which I have yet to build. While at the brewery, I should start making pickled goods out of berries roots, mushrooms and vegetables, put the limit of 25, use some barrels, water skins or clay pots, ale we need grain for, same resources here, go to 25 and packs of crops we don't really need produced here, the humans are going to be producing these goods here, oh here we go, so what's Open Vault. Open Vault means a thick spreading cloud of miasmite, it kills every living being within a radius of 20 fields. If I work here, I am going to have a huge debuff to my gatherers and woodcutters and uh, the impatience will grow faster. So I need to clear this up really fast and in order to do this, I just need to assign some workers. I have some humans here, but first of all, I want a road here built so that I can get to this place faster to not waste any time. So that's one thing. The other thing is that I will need to sacrifice lots of sea marrow to get this done really quickly and avoid having such a huge penalty to resolve. Because with minus 14 resolve, that's the resolve that my harpies have, I will have a big issue with them. Now additional building that I found here was the forum, which is a cool building to get education and leisure from. Also here I could spend my 14 tools and get lots of box of crystallized dew, barrels of wine, some wild essences and more stone production, which I don't really have on this map. And over here we have more flex fields and we have an additional fertile soil, which is all the stuff that I need. So these guys should clean up the entrances to here. Well, these guys should clean up the soil from here so that I can see all of it. And I need to bring in somebody to start collecting this. So we'll get them to work here. Let's get some harpies working on that. And as I said, now that I have a road here, I will just get the connection all the way here. I will send two humans to work in here, gain essences for roots, wild essences and ancient tablets. These all I can sell or I could just get the queen's reputation, which isn't a bad idea either. So use this. But now because of the minus resolve, I will have to speed this up and in order to speed this up, I will sacrifice the meadow. So I will go really quickly on that. And if I'm already sacrificing it to do these events, I might as well use the rest of the population on the other events and it will go much faster so we'll send these guys here and we'll need more population for this let's just find somebody freed up here and then one more here i can salvage it and get scrolls and ale or i can rebuild it and have a place to get education and leisure although i can already have leisure if i build my own tavern and that will cost me four bricks but also eight fiber and 20 planks to tell you the truth i kind of want to just salvage it because it's so far away I don't want my villagers going so far so I'm going to investigate it but salvage it we can see here that 1 minute 40 is the time that is going to take these humans once they actually get here and I'm already suffering from that debilitating effect minus 14 resolve so I should find my harpies wherever they are being the harvesters and then switch them over for something else because they're really suffering and I think over here some more harpies so wherever they are collecting and suffering I will disable them and you can see now that I am no longer suffering that debilitating reduction of the resolve because they are not working on places where this debuff is affecting them so I finally have 15 building materials and then I'm going to finish up this so I will get the increase to production of grain and also 30 ale and now I am going to go with the tavern since I do have plenty of ale stockpile down. And now I can choose a new building. The ranch would produce meat, which is excellent, especially because I have plenty of the items necessary for meat production, which is plant fiber and also grain. So that's an excellent building to choose. The tool shop I don't really need. The water skins are useful because I need them like I need barrels, but for that I would need leather, which I don't really have an access to. So there's no point in going for the leather worker. The tool shop, the explorer's lodge would give me brawling and education. Brawling I don't really need. Education I could use, 
but I don't really want to spend my resources on making scrolls. So I'm going to go with the ranch and the ranch I can easily build as it only requires planks as fit here. And that ranch is going to produce us eggs with grain and meat with plant fiber. Now to get the 14 to leisure, I need to employ somebody here at the tavern with three harpies here. I'm going to get the gleam and tail, which means plus three through global resolve and just in the nick of time because I'm losing global resolve due to the storm and its effects which are stacking now because I have level one hostility from the forest. They are going to use the 70 ale that I have stockpiled to gain leisure and that is going to finally get this need for leisure fulfilled, basic rights order fulfilled. While over here, they seem to have finally cleaned up all of this and I can use one more building here to get this order fulfilled. So I can go with the plantation. When I think about it, the berries have few uses. Maybe I should actually go with another small farm because I will be using my grain for both production of food and ale. So yeah, I'm going to go with this one after all and then have plenty of farm fields here. So we'll have that producing grain and vegetables while over here I'm still only producing vegetables as I need that for food as I don't have the other sources of food and I do need vegetables to turn them here into pickle goods for the beavers. While I need the jerky or the biscuits for my harpies and that's the building that I have yet to unlock which is why I'm hurrying up with doing these orders. New trader who will buy planks and I can sell pretty much all of them. 207, that's 37 amber worth. Now let's see what do we get from him. We have the furniture perk, which adds plus one to resolve for everyone with a home, which is excellent. A clever invention that makes it easier to dry clothes. Time spent resting is reduced by 20% when under the effect of clothing. We have motivation, double production yields when under the effect of education, which I can't really use, and lower hostility by 50 points. That's actually excellent because I'm almost up to hostility level two. So I'm going to buy that. I should get furniture as well and drying boards. Why not? Let's use up. And I still have 26 amber. So what else can I buy? I could buy some training gear because I'm having issues to produce it because I need to spend both crystallized dew and planks, although I do have plenty of crystallized dew now, and but I need it for simple tools. So it's not really the thing that I want to be spending those items on. And training gear is 0.35, planks are 0.18. So it's not really that difficult to buy, let's say 40 of these. I would need only about 78 planks for that. So I'll buy those and then the rest of the planks, I will sell almost all of them exclusively for Amber. Let's add a few more to get this to the maximum. There we go. 125 planks get me 18 Amber. Now you can see with the leisure, with the extra food, how suddenly this situation has changed. At Drizzle, I have 21 resolve on harpies, 39 resolve on beavers and 36 resolve on humans where just a few minutes ago this was all much lower and I'm going to be filling up the repetition bar much quicker because of so many extra effects that are all coming together at once. Now let's see what can we get. We can get pies, cures, coats and bedhouse. No, this is not what I want. So let us uh, reroll cookhouse cures and biscuits and that is the best choice here so we are going to go with the cookhouse and we'll build it let's go here in the cookhouse i can make skewers for meat that's going to satisfy the need for complex foods for harpies and i'll put the limit on that for about 25 and i will need to use all these items when they are gathered as the second ingredient pigment i will not be producing all over here herbs with the berries and the roots and flour will be producing these biscuits and we'll put that to like 55. Now I have finished another order. This one will get me pickled goods, barrels and also the cellar which can produce wine which I don't really need as I'm already producing wine using my rain collectors here and I think I have lots of wine. Yeah, all, about 200 wine. I just need to actually unlock a building where I can use that. Now I have the smokehouse for jerky which is useful to get another complex food for humans and harpies. While there is the smelter, the artisan, 
and the forager camp. Forager camp could be useful for some vegetables and grain, which I don't really have too much on this map. Artisan I don't need, as I'm already producing these things. Smelter, copper bars, I don't really have a source for copper. And so I could either reroll for five amber, try to find something else, or go with the production of jerky. In essence, since I have the ranch, I might as well go with this. So I'm going to choose this, the smokehouse here, and then we can build the smokehouse here. And the important thing is that then we stop the production, which is going to use meat, raw meat, and switch it to jerky for skewers, and then produce this building first. So we'll set the priority of one to it, but I don't really have any builders free. So, oh, here we go. Agriculture, another order finished. So that's more arrivals, more grain production, and more tools and parts. That's excellent. Now that my food is kind of low again, and we are going to have some new meat, which are going to push to priority one now and reduce the priority on eggs. Because here at the smokehouse, we are going to be needing to produce the jerky, which we are going to put at 35. Pottery, we are going to need. So we are going to keep that in production and incense, we do not need but we'll put jerky at priority of one. This place needs lizards, but we don't have those. So we'll choose one of the other races. And with that, we are almost done, but I really wanted to unlock one of these. So let's move the woodcutters and unlock one of these. So let's put two of them here, but that about does it. Didn't get to do that as I had such a high resolve bonus that was filling up my reputation and now we have unlocked some new buildings and also some new cornerstones that look awesome and i have gained 12 artifacts 12 machinery and 36 food stockpiles without ever actually producing a single biscuit now you can see that you can plan and you can try to have an idea what you're going to be doing but in the end something totally different comes up and you have to be flexible to manage it all Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for more videos.